All right, so I apologize for the flicker. My camera doesn't like it that much, but I just want to show you what this thing is doing right now. I'm going to turn it on here. And we like to jokingly say that this is a Russian ColecoVision. But you can see what it's doing on the screen. Other than that, it works. Put a cartridge in, it will play, but you got garbage on the screen. I spent a few minutes today working on a ColecoVision motherboard that has, from what I can tell, a bad RAM chip. And we're going to see if we can salvage it. Alright, so here's the motherboard that has issues. As you can see, I wrote down on it what's wrong with it already because I did some testing. What I did, I left it plugged in for a while. And these are the RAM chips, the 8 RAM chips. I kept feeling them and feeling them and eventually I discovered that U10 right here is overheating. You can feel the temperature difference between it and the others after like about a minute. So I let it go like five minutes and definitely this one's overheating. And normally overheating RAMs mean bad RAM. You also said I wrote down clean reset. I got to hit this with some contact cleaner because you really got to beat this to make it work. But that's an issue though. So we're going to remove that. We're going to put a socket in there. And then we're going to make a little adapter for a different style of RAM chip that I have on hand. And put it in and see if I can make it work. So to do that, I'm going to take my Sharpie here, and I want to make sure I mark the right one. I don't want to be pulling apart the wrong one. So this is U10. Look over there. That's U10, that line and that line. Those are the ones I have to work on. I don't want to be working on that one or that one by mistake. I want U10. Okay. Sorry, I know which one i got to work on. I'm waiting for my solder, soldering iron to heat up and my desoldering iron to heat up. Kind of use them both because you have to apply solder first, build up a nice layer, and then use the solder remover to suck them out. I'm going to try to use some of this heavier solder here. See if it works. Let's just see. Is this thing hot enough yet to melt? Oh, it is. Okay. So maybe we can make it work. Let's just see what we got here. Let me turn this light on here. There. That might be better. So now I'm just going to see if I can apply some solder. Get my glasses off because I ain't closing. Let's see if I can get some solder to apply to these pins. Alright, this solder's not going to stick. I didn't think it was. I've always had problems with the solder because it's overly thick. But I thought maybe I could use it for desoldering purposes, but I guess not. So I'm going to get out the solder I always use, which is thin solder. Probably should just toss that thing. I've had that for years and I keep trying to find a use for it and I can't. So let's try this again. We're going to go on this one here. So you put a big old blob on it. I want to put a big blob on each one. That gives something for the soldering remover to actually catch on and hopefully get it apart in one shot. Probably could use some flux on here to get a better connection, but I'm just trying to clean these off right now. I want to get this removed. I've had about 75% uh, success rate with removing chips. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's probably either my technique or my tools, but I keep trying. Get a bunch of solder to this and just get it in there. If you hear talking in the background, my office mate has, or uh, my next door office. The next door neighbor in our office building has clients today. So you hear him talking out in the waiting room. I can't tell him to be quiet because that's just not right. There. Let's get a little bit more on this one here. Now that this thing's getting hotter, stuff's sticking better. Sometimes you really got to let your soldering iron really heat up. Even though it's melting the solder, it's not melting it a lot. So there we go. Tap it off to get rid of it, just like Bob Ross does with his paintbrushes. Beat the dickens out of it. Now what I got here is my soldering remover. Yeah, solder remover. And I just got to make sure it's cleaned out. Tap it, get any solder that's 
up in there out because I don't want it shooting more solder down on me. Basically what this is, this is a soldering iron that has a hollow tip. Which I'm going to clean. Where is my brass one? It has a hollow tip and a vacuum that sucks it out. One of these days, if I did this enough, I'd probably get one. But one of these days, I should get one of the electric ones where you just put it down and go, and it sucks out the solder instead of using this one. But this one seems to work. Now, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see what I'm doing here, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this down on top of the thing, and I'm going to sit there until the solder flows, and then try to suck it out. Now, I'm not sure if you can see that, but that one's nice and clean. And then what I do is I take it, tap it off the side, and make sure there's no solder in there. Because I don't want solder to splash down on the chip, or on the board. So far, so good. Doesn't mean the chip's gonna come out immediately, but it, it is going good. Maybe I'll get lucky today. That one didn't do too well. I might have to come back to that one. It looks like one of them is going to need a little bit more solder applied to it. Oh, maybe two. What happens is, sometimes, you the little edge of the pin doesn't go up in the hole. And because of that, what happens is you suck solder from around it and not through it the hole. So I got, for my motel, I got two pins in here that didn't come loose. This one, or didn't clean up completely. This one, and that one. So I'm going to put some more solder back on there. And go back in there again. And before I do that, where is my little brass brush here? I'm just going to brush the solder off. Make sure it's out of there. Go back in here and we'll try this one again. And this time I want to make sure I get it in the hole a little better. Okay, that one I got. And then we got this last one. Other times, once you get the solder removed, you can, once you get the solder removed, or the solder hot, you can move the solder sucker a little bit to move the pin over if it's bent but it looks like I may have got that one already so let's just see what we can do there. I'm going to take my little screwdriver here I'm just going to see if I can lever it up gently if not I'll have to go back and do some more I don't see so Okay, it's still sticking in places, so I may have to heat it up as I pull it out. Let's just be closer in here and see what we got. Uh, I'm still not happy with that one. Some of these have the pins that are pulled over to the side, so they may be catching. That one. Just reheated. It looks like some of these pins are bent, so I'm trying to bend them to the center of the hole and then suck the solder out that's still there. That seems to help. Mm -hmm.
All right, let's see what we got now. Glasses back on so I can see it again. Is it moving now? There we go. I'm trying to go very gentle because I don't want to lift the trace up off the board. So far, so good. Voila, look at that. Came up very cleanly. Very cleanly, and the board looks very clean. I got a little chunk of solder right there, but I'm going to leave that alone because it's not in the way. And the other side looks good. I'm going to just brush that down. Not with this because this can ruin stuff. I got a plastic one here. I'm just going to brush it down with a plastic brush. I'm not going to use the brass one because the brass could actually rip the traces up. But from everything I can see, none of these traces got damaged. Yeah, some of the green mask got pulled off from the soldering iron. Or from the desoldering iron, which I now unplug because I'm done using that. This is a very handy tool. If you're only doing this occasionally, this is very handy. If you're doing it all the time, then you need to get yourself a real desoldering gun. Now, I'm going to add a socket there. Let me brush this side too. Now I got a socket. I bought these in bulk a while back and they seem to work pretty good. They're not perfect, but they work. What I just did off the camera there is I bent the legs so that they will stick them straight. Now if you look at the board, you'll see that there's a little notch in the white silk screen that tells you which way the chip goes. I'll make sure that notch lines up with there just so that everything looks right and that I don't get confused later. Now let's see if I can get this to go down in the hole. That was in there. Got to be careful pushing them in because sometimes the pins want to, instead of going in the hole, they want to lift up. Like I had two pins lift up there, but what I'm going to do is, I don't know if you can see that, but I had two of the pins lift up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the soldering iron and heat that hole up and push that pin in the rest of the way. And this gets hot, so sometimes you can burn your finger doing this, so you got to be careful. So I just push that one through. That one's in, now this one's the second from the bottom. Same thing again. There, now all the pins are pushed in. Now I can take my actual soldering, my solder and my soldering iron, and I can solder it back together. And this solder I have has um, rosin core already in it. Actually, no, this one doesn't have, oh yeah, it does, it does have flux, duh. It has flux in it, so I don't put flux on there. I used to, but flux is messy. I really don't know what you're breathing, so I'm going to solder it in. Clay so. What I do is you put the soldering iron up against the pin I'm going to do, and I just feed the solder into the hole. Feed into the hole. This is how I do every one of my cartridges that I've built, and I've built about 500 of them so far since last September. Same way. Oh, they're telling jokes out there. I don't know the joke, but it sounds funny. They're all laughing. They should come share the joke with me. All right, so I got one side done. Alright, so that's in there. Now I'm going to... Where are you at? My little spray bottle. Oh, drop the super glue. My little spray bottle, spritzer bottle of rubbing alcohol. I'm going to just spritz that. Clean it a little bit. And there we go. Get in there, look real close, make sure. Everything's done good. All the connections are made. Nothing short. 
No traces lifted. We look good. Then the other side, we just have the socket there. Just waiting for a chip to be put in it. Now I'm going to get the chip together. All right, so now I'm back and I got my 4164 chip. The difference between a 4164 and a 4116, besides the one number, is that a 4116 has 16,000. 484? I think that's the right number. 16,000. It has 16K worth of memory, but only one bit wide. A 4164 has 64K, 65536, bits of memory, but only one bit wide. So this one has four times as much memory as that one. Other than that, they're almost exactly the same. This is the pinouts for the 4116, and this is the pinouts for the 4164. And the only difference being is pin 1 and pin 8 and 9. So to, as this thing shows here, and I'll put a link just so you can see it. The way you make a 4164 work in a 4116 is you cut off pin 1, which is that one there, because there's no connection on that one. Uh, and the 4116 is connected to, I think it's 21 volts? or 12 volts or whatever, or minus 5, whatever, uh, minus 5 volts, it's connected minus 5 volts, and the 4116, 4164 doesn't use minus 5, so you just cut off that one, so, that's pin 1, let's just make pin 1 go bye-bye, right there, take my little nippers, oh, those are warm, I've got the soldering iron still in, make that one go bye-bye, nice, so pin 1's on this side, pin, bend out pin 8, which is this one down here, over to bend it over the top like so and then I'm going to run a little wire jumper so that it goes to pin 9 because if you look pin 8 on here is 5 volts VCC which is 5 volts but pin 8 on here is VDD which is 12 volts well we don't use 12 volts we need 5 volts but the 5 volts is over here on pin 9 which is right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to run five bolts over to that one by just jumpering them. And it doesn't hurt that a seven high, I guess. All right, so let's see if we can do this without having to put this in a vise or anything. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tin this pin here. By tinning it means I'm going to put a bunch of solder on it, like that. I got this um, diode. I'm just going to use it as my jumper. So. Alright, so that's dry down there. Then I'm going to just hold it tightly. See if I can bend it to touch this one here. this up a little bit. Um, no, I'm doing it off camera. I'm sorry for that. Hold it tightly. Get these two to get close enough to touch each other. And let's just see if I can get some solder on that. Uh, let's see. I want you up a little higher. Bend you up a little higher. There. So now they're touching. Now, we're going to use just to hold this in place. Yeah, maybe I can use it. Nice little clip here. Yeah, that'll work. Okay. Now I'm going to take my solder again, and I'm going to just solder this piece together. Once that dries, or not dries, once it cools, it's not glue. Once that cools, I'll go clip off the rest of it. I went somewhere. I'll find it when I'm sweeping. So there. It's not pretty, but it is workable. Now, we're going to put this in here. It's got a little notch on it right there. That notch has to go to the notch that's in here. 
Just make sure none of my legs bend up. I want to make sure all my legs get in the, get in the holes where they belong. Okay. Get in there. Get in there. Yeah, now it's seated in nicely. Everything's in there good. So we replaced it. So now I'm going to set back up here and test it. And we're going to find out if that helped it. I'm going to spray this real quick with some contact cleaner. Now you could use Deoxit. Uh, I think Deoxit is just like a brand name of what I'm using here. I'm just using electrical cleaner is what it's called. So try to get some of this down into the crack in here. Let's do it this way. And just work it down in there. I'm just getting the excess out. There we go. Take me all dirty rag here and just dry these off. This stuff dries out pretty fast, the contact cleaner does. So it doesn't leave behind a puddle. Now I'm going to shut down and put my monitor back or my TV back on the bench here. I'm going to give it a shot and see if it works. All right, so we're back here, and I poked it up. If anybody's curious as to what these wires are here, I have over here on the side. I'm hanging up the side of my bench here, an old Atom power supply, and then I had a put together quick and dirty plug for it, and that's just a pass through a printer if I want to use it. But then I made an adapter that just lets me plug into the ColecoVision. That way, I have power. There. So we haven't turned it on yet. So let's just see. Oh, look at that. Will you look at that? That's what it was. No more Russian text. Ooh -hoo. Does the reset button work? Oh. Now the reset button is still bad. I got it to work yesterday when I was banging on it, but I think the reset button just may be flaky. I might have to fix that. I might have to pull that apart. But that's nice that I got it there. Now let's just get a cartridge. Okay, so this is the one I was using yesterday. Yeah, let's just see. Oh, yeah, will you look at that? Now, that's me banging on the reset button. This is what I did yesterday, and it, I made it reset once, so I thought it was a dirty contact, but it could just, could just be that the reset button is just broken. I might have to just replace that. But that's nice. I mean, it's not perfect. It's not beautiful. I mean... What would have been better is just to have replaced it with another one of these. But the 4116s are very hard to come by. The 4164s are very easy to come by. And the nice thing is, is this repair can also be done on the Clico Atom. Let me get something and I'll show you. This right here is a Clico Atom. The mother, the Clico Vision board is laid out differently, but these chips right here are your VRAM chips. And the same issue, if you have corrupted text on your screen, turn it on, leave it in Clico Vision mode for a while, and feel and see if any of them get hot. They are all 416 as you can see, and they can be replaced with this little patch adapter. Then down here on the Atom, this is one that I've got to finish rebuilding because it's got a mess of traces but down here on the atom it has one two three four five or five six seven eight those are the eight memory chips and these are four one six four chips down here this one had bad chips and I removed a number of them but you see how the traces just started to lift up so this one's a mess so I'm gonna try to do something different with this one to bring it back to life other than that Let's see how it works. This top board works, though. There's nothing wrong with the top board, so I don't have to worry about that. So there you go. We made this, and let's see. Can I bring it back? 
See, the reset button is just not going anywhere. I think you get a little aggressive with it. Yeah, it, it's, it's either the button's dead or it's so corrupted inside, but I'm going to have to do something to it. I'll figure it out. But that's the minor problem is the reset button. That RAM is I mean, it's awesome. That, that one chip was it. And ignore this screen. This, this TV has seen better days, so it's got a really ugly picture. Have a good one. Real quick jump cut. After I got done filming everything, I started stripping my desk down and cleaned it, or bench down, and started cleaning up and stuff. I just looked at this and I realized it says it don't work. Let's pull it apart and see why it don't work. And so I took my little screwdriver here. I'm trying to get in the camera, and I use it to pull it apart and. It's just a piece of plastic and a rubberized dome in there. I pulled it apart. I took a Q-tip and I took some rubbing alcohol and I just cleaned it up really good and then put it back together and it works. So the uh, deoxy slash contact cleaner just couldn't get down past the rubber, but that's all it needed. And it works. So that's good too. Sweet.